Hi there, I am Dr. Natasha Ross and I am a lecturer and researcher at the Chemistry Department of the University of the Western Cape. I started my studies at the University of the Western Cape soon after I matriculated in 2005. I registered for a BSc Chemical Science degree, which is basically a three-year degree during which I had to complete seven modules. These included chemistry, which was my core module, followed by mathematics, statistics, computer literacy, environmental sciences, biotechnology, as well as English literacy. When I successfully completed my first degree, I was so excited. I just wanted to take my diploma and change the world. But I soon realized that the job market is extremely competitive. And in order to set myself above the rest, I would have to obtain an honors degree as well. So I didn't hesitate and immediately after my first degree, I did just for an honors degree, which is basically a one year degree during which you will complete only chemistry advanced modules. After I completed my honors degree, I realized that I completely love science. I just want to continue. So I decided to register for a master's degree, which will then require me to study an additional two years. But I was so in love with working in the lab and doing experiments and learning new things that I spent most of my time in the laboratory that instead of completing it in two years, I managed to do it in one year. So I was completely chuffed with myself, but I realized I didn't want to stop there. I was already in the game, in the research. So I wanted to go for the big degree, the final one, the highest degree that you can obtain and the title as well. So I decided to complete my PhD. So many have asked me, why a PhD? So for me, a PhD is all about discovering new things, creating new knowledge and developing my skills. And a PhD is, is about contributing towards the knowledge economy. And it gave me an opportunity to invest in knowledge, to create new knowledge and to spend more time in a specific area of chemistry which I loved the most and that was analytical chemistry. So the topic and the focus of my doctorate degree was um, energy to improve the energy storage capacity of lithium ion batteries as well as the efficiency of solar cells. In essence, my research is strongly motivated by the current energy crisis of South Africa, especially load shedding. And I hope that the research that I do within the laboratory will somehow reduce the load of the national energy grid and improve the quality of life of so many South Africans out there. I wish to one day see that every South African is able to use renewable energy more efficiently and effectively and not rely on cold-fired power plants anymore. Looking back now, I must confess that being a student is not easy, not at all. I had to sacrifice so many things in order to obtain three degrees and the title of doctor, um, but I'm grateful. I'm truly grateful that I didn't have it easy. I'm grateful for the tough times because all the experiences I've had as a student over, over the years at the University of the Western Cape has made me the person that I am today. It has helped develop my character and helped me to best handle the stresses and challenges of life. I had to constantly remind myself that there's no shortcuts to success. And that's my motto even today as an academic. I grew up in a small impoverished community where there were little to no opportunities and I knew that education will be the one thing that will help me rise above my circumstances. In school I decided to spend more time focusing on my learning and understanding especially chemistry and mathematics because I knew that was two of the main requirements in order to study chemistry at the University of the Western Cape. I didn't have tutors or mentors and fancy textbooks, but what I had 
was my dream. I dream of becoming a scientist and making a difference in the world out there. So that kept me motivated and inspired. And I just became more proactive in my learning. I was always inspired by the quote of Nelson Mandela when he said that there's no passion to be found in playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of living. So I didn't want to settle for a life that is not the one that I'm capable of living. I wanted to be someone that can make a difference in the world of my fellow South Africans. So the same today, I am aware that many of you are struggling because of the COVID-19 pandemic and during this time you are unable to su sustain your learning during the lockdown period. But I, I earnestly plead with you today to relinquish your fears and just change your mindset because it's the ball is in your court. It's all up to you. You have to become proactive in your learning. Spend more time in your books. It's not easy, yes. If you want to pass and make still make the best of this year, it's possible, but it's up to you. No one is gonna do the work if you are not gonna do it. So please don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you can do with what you have right now and not what someone else can do for you. Because at the end of the day, you have to point the finger to yourself and say, what have I done to improve my life? Don't develop a wait and see approach, sitting back and making excuses because of what you cannot do or what you don't have because of COVID-19. No, I used to learn that when you make an excuse, it's because you don't actually don't want to do it. And at the end of the day, it's not going to help you very much. So the sooner you start taking responsibility for your learning, the better. Use your time wisely. Make, make use of every resource you have in order to improve your understanding in a particular subject so that you can pass with high grades. I'm sure many of you are dreaming of studying at a university of your choosing one day, but that's not going to happen if you are going to sit back and wait for better days. You have to earn the high grades. You have to make the most of the time that you have now. Speaking from my own experience, I can truly say that once you do more than what is required, you will have success. That will open up so many doors in your life because you are proactive. You don't wait around for someone to tell you to do something. You are enthusiastic about what you want to do with your future. So I want to leave you with these words of William Hentley. And he said that I am the master of my fate and I am the captain of my soul. So just remember, before you make excuses the next time, think about the choices that you are making. And know that you don't have much time left in high school. The real world is tough. So you better start now to develop that proactive nature of thinking and learning. Because no one else is going to give you handouts in life. If you want to make it, if you want to improve, your, your area, your life, you can do it. Don't wait for someone else to do it for you. Many of you know the third law of physics, the third law of Newton, that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So remember that whatever you put in, the energy that you give it, is gonna come back to you. You will reap the rewards of your labor and the effort that you put in. So I truly, I wish you the best. And I hope that I will see you in my chemistry class in the next few years. Bye. Dear students, it's really a pleasure to be able to speak to you today and to be able to leave you with a message because you guys are the future and you guys are going to carry us into the future and you must always remember that uh, the world is at your feet and that you can do anything you set your mind to so 
Who am I? I'm Shane Willenberg. I am currently a, completing my PhD at the University of the Western Cape Chemistry Department. I started studying in the year 2012 and I decided to pursue a career in science because let's face it science is fun <laughs> also very challenging very daunting but i was inspired by my high school teacher to do better to make a change in this world um, she could always um, provide answers to my inquisitive mind and um, her name is Wendy Warren, and she is currently um, still inspiring young kids just like yourself to do better. So I was always passionate, always had a wanted to know how things work, and and I'm currently at the forefront of um, new age technologies, which I will speak a bit, a little bit about later so um, let me get to it so we will be I'll take you through uh, briefly how I started my career um, and we'll take it from there so I in first year I had um, chosen science subjects obviously uh, physics mathematics um, computer science and I found it not easy but I, I, I could easily like I could really go through the year without too much um, pressure on my back because I had a good background um, from high school and the work was very similar um, with minor challenges here and there and I could kind of study um, like not too long in advance for for uh, my test exams and basically get by with minimal effort and then uh, second year started and I employed that same mindset that I can just do it because I'm kind of smart but I, I learned uh, quite a harsh lesson in that um, you, uh, you can't get through life by just doing the least. And uh, the work piled up. I had more and more work and I um, had to put in more effort. And I realized that I'm always behind on my assignments and tests. And things got very difficult, um, even to the point where I eventually failed a subject and I had to redo it, um, which which was a quite a setback. In hindsight, uh, it's, in hindsight, I think about it as um, a learning curve, a big learning curve, and um, a good thing that actually happened. Uh, but at the time, of course, it was really disappointing to myself, my family, and um, I realized that actually in life, the, you will go through failures and uh, no matter at what point you are but the main the main thing is to not let that keep you down uh, quickly brush it off uh, fix what you must fix uh, be it within your studies within your personal life within relationships um, and then push on push on because uh, i also realized that you are your worst enemy and once I realized that, I was able to um, quickly um, redo the, the subject that I failed, apply myself, and because, because I had the, the mindset to um, get through it with whatever it takes, because at the time I had to take, because I failed, I had to do an extra subject. So it was my I was doing my third year subjects with a second year subject and um, it wasn't easy of course but because I had the drive to complete what I started um, and I was still passionate I just realized that 
this is just a setback. It, it taught me many things um, to deal with these kind of disappointments and um, to get up uh, from from um, where I fell. So even for you guys, if you struggle through schooling, struggle um, even in matric, uh, maybe fail a subject or two, it's not the end of the world. You could always um, this, uh, do the supplementaries in March and June, I think it is. And then you can get back, get back, get a bursary. Um, I always, I always, um, one of my biggest uh, regrets actually is not working hard enough in grade 11 in order to get a, a um, bursary in grade 12 because uh, some university, universities were already offering bursaries um, to the grade 12 um, learners and that, that actually motivated me to work hard in grade 12 so that I can get a bursary in first year which, which I did, which I did. Um, you, I think you get a 100% rebate um, if you get an A for matric and you get 75% rebate if you get a B so um, yes, I, I managed to get to get um, a bursary there, and um, I, I was glad because it, it took some pressure off my parents as, as well, um, as things are not always easy at home. And um, I was able to also get a bursary in second year, third year. The university offers different bursary packages depending on what you did. Um, I always um, did sport, so. Um, my, my uh, my involvement in sport at a provincial and national level also allowed me to uh, get bursaries and of course you have to pass and do well in order to maintain those bursaries so yes i believe that balance is very important so it doesn't matter what you do um, do pick up a hobby that um, keeps you motivated keeps you um, keeps you going because if you only focus on your studies it, it, it you'll you'll get days which you just feel super unmotivated you don't want to do anything and that's when you can do your hobby and then you'll get back to it and this this really helped me throughout my period of studies i still have many hobbies i do sports i do um chess i do uh, cricket and um Yes, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I also believe that with this balance comes good. You, you, you're able to plan to manage your time. Uh, also, one thing that I realize is important as a student is to plan a schedule. So this schedule doesn't, a lot of people think that the schedule kind of um, keeps you confined, puts you in a sort of box or prison. But actually, if you follow it and um, you don't have to uh, plan it like step by step by step. You can in between, you can put there what you want, the things you want. If you want to watch CDs for an hour during the day, you can do it, but you just need to know that you would need to follow that up or before doing that a lot. Um, you could also reward yourself with the CDs or the box of chocolates or whatever. Um, once you've completed your work, your assignment, or the the couple of chapters that you completed studying that day so it's always good as a student to reward yourself so um, after my minor setback in second year i completed my undergraduate degree in um, with, with uh, decent marks in order to do honors and i did honors and eventually masters sorry and with that i was able to think about how i or well, i was able to i was to give myself a platform um, to choose how i want to impact this world how i want to make a difference or where i see myself making this difference so i chose uh, sustainable energy because it's it's we face it every day we have these issues since the time like from the time i can remember 
of load shedding. We never know when it's going to hit us. And um, if you look into other countries on the African con continent, it's even worse. So we've, we would kind of have scheduled load shedding. Other countries would have unscheduled load shedding, which goes on for days, even weeks. And um, I hope to to change this um, in a big way or small way. But um, through my work in energy storage technologies, I look to hopefully create a system where um, we can eventually move off from um, the, nas the national grid move away from um, coal or nuclear um, but look for more natural ways to store energy from let's say wind or solar energy and to use this for our households or um, our businesses and um, in this way we will be able to be more sustainable and not impact the environment the way it's been impacted. I mean, um, if we were to all change from elect from internal combustion cars to electric vehicles, we would um, reduce the impact on our atmosphere by about fifty percent. Um, so that's just, just that's just an example. So currently, I'm working on. Um, lithium-ion batteries um, for, for different applications really but um, mainly to to improve its capacity um, so and energy density because uh, lithium is relatively cheap and it's it's widely available um, and, and our country is also very minerally rich so the materials I'm using are, are contained within our country and are, are able to and, and the synthesis, the, the way I'm making my materials, are, are, I look to use the cheapest methods and mainly to improve the, the capacities of this material. Wouldn't it be great if uh, our phones could charge even quicker if we could um, and they could last much longer and wouldn't it be great if uh, we wouldn't have to pay so much for petrol to put into our cars but we could instead um, use long-range uh, electric vehicles which use lithium-ion batteries um, and, and won't damage the atmosphere this is the ideal world so I look to um, to use my knowledge and expertise in this field. I I look up to a a very famous tech giant entrepreneur, Elon Musk. Uh, he's always he's always been uh, someone. He's, he's South African. He's always been someone who I looked up to, who I followed on social media. I read his book. And um, he, he currently is the CEO of Tesla Motors and um, it's an electric car um, company and one day hopefully if he establishes a branch in South Africa I hope to, to join that company and to start producing electric vehicles um, so that we don't need to spend so much money uh, on fuel very soon we'll be paying 29 a liter who knows but uh, electric costs are obviously much cheaper and um, the, 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 the they'll be able to last much longer so I, I really hope that um, you guys can also find your niche and follow it, it doesn't have to be science but as long as you enjoy it and as long as you are passionate about what you do, um, the world is really your oyster. I leave you with a quote. 
when someone when something is important enough you do it even if the odds are not in your favor elon musk thank you